Hi everyone, thank you for joining this session with the University of Sussex. I hope you're well. Um, really looking forward to chatting to you. My name is Kasha, I'm the International Officer here at Sussex in North America, so um, would be your point of contact here at Sussex. Uh, just to make you aware, um, I am currently can't see your chats or anything like that, so I'll come to all questions at the end. So feel free to pop them in the chat box as we go, but I will answer them at the end of the session. So today I'm going to uh, talk to you about Sussex a little bit, what we're like as a university. And then, um, so the first sort of 15 minutes will be about that. After which I'm going to speak specifically about law at Sussex. Um, I know for a lot of students in Canada, that'll be an area of something that's of big interest. And I want to give it some time to talk about that as well. So Sussex is a campus-based university down on that southeast coast of the UK, as you can see there. Um, we are a contained campus with um, the majority of our facilities and accommodations there. Home to around 18,000 students on any given year. Um, about 12 to 13,000 of those will be in undergrad, the rest will be in master's and PhD programmes. We have a very, really good community um, of Canadian students, over 150 are currently at Sussex um, in various different programmes. But we're a very international community overall with about 30% of Sussex students coming from outside of the UK and actually from all over the world. And we are a research intensive university, um, meaning that as well as teaching, we're in very, very active in research. And recently, 89% of our research was classed as world leading or of international excellence. So um, we're pretty good at it as well. Um, in terms of what else we're good at, we are currently ranked first in the world for development studies and actually have been for the past six years. So this is covering things like international relations, international development, international education, um, development policy, climate change, all of those kinds of things. Uh, we also recently got voted University of the Year for Student Retention, which means that our students are starting degrees with us and completing them. About 98% of students will who start at Sussex will to finish their degree with us and we hope that means that as well as enjoying their studies they are getting the support and guidance they need to do that successfully. As you can see otherwise we have some really good academic acc accolades, uh, top 160 university worldwide and I really have strengths in the engineering business, physical sciences, social sciences and psychology as well. So in terms of degree programmes, these are the broad subject areas we offer. We offer most of these at undergrad and postgrad level, um, depending on what you are looking at today. Uh, with undergrad degrees, they tend to be in the UK more um, broad uh, within the subject area. Master's programmes you'll find that are far more specific and um, will have you know very niche uh, titles to the degrees. Uh, just as a reminder, degrees in the UK undergrads are three years, masters are one year. So um, things get done a lot quicker with a much more um, direct focus in the UK than elsewhere um, in North America. So in terms of requirements, what we're looking at, um, if you are thinking you'd like to join us for an undergrad program. Your high school education is going to be the most relevant to this. And if you studied in Canada, um, we have various qualifications on here as well. But obviously, we can consider high school, high school diplomas from all over the country. We, I've also included the MRIB uh, requirements here, about 30 to 32 points, if that applies to you. Some degree programmes will have specific subject requirements, um, things like uh, maths, the hard sciences, uh, physical sciences and the life sciences and engineering as well. Uh, we will need a sub, some sort of subject uh, knowledge background there. Um, others in the sort of arts, humanities and social sciences um, don't require this. And then if you are considering a, a postgraduate study with us, this is what you're looking at. So if you're looking at graduate entry law, which is a two year degree, you're going to need a GPA of 3.0 or above from a four years bachelor's degree. If you've taken a three years bachelor's, we can consider it, but it's not a guaranteed um, entry um, into that. Other master's programmes, usually about 3.3 or above from a four year bachelor's. And then if you are looking for PhD, be a master's and a bachelor's degree as well. So in terms of what we're looking at tuition wise, um, we have variable rates depending on what you're looking at. These prices are tuition alone per year. So um, for pretty much most of the arts, humanities and social sciences undergrad degrees, just over £19,000 for anything lab based, just over 23 and medicine is just over 39000 For masters, um, we have three different tiers. So standard tier, uh, just around the 19,000, the higher tier around the 23, and um, 
if you are looking at our MBA program, it is 23,000 as well. Oh, I just wanted to mention scholarships on here. Um, so we have lots of different scholarships that are variable. They are currently being updated on our website. Um, so I've not included them all here because not everything's being released, but do have a look at our website for details of those. There are scholarships for international students available. Um, there are more offerings at master's level than undergrad, but there are still options at undergrad as well. So in terms of what your life might look at at Sussex, regardless of the level of study you're coming to, we'll probably focus around societies, getting involved in sports clubs and the other campus life. Just wanted to touch on uh, accommodation options. So we do offer um, accommodation to those uh, joining us in their first year if we're your first choice university or if you're an international master's student you're also guaranteed accommodation on campus. We do have about 6,000 rooms in the space um, with 10 sort of different communities as you can sort of see from this area of view here. All, but, all um, accommodations are single rooms so we ha we'll always have your own bedroom and then we have options that have their own bathroom as well. They are all self-catered, so no expensive meal plans or anything like that to buy into. And you have proper kitchens in which to cater yourself for them. If you're coming for a, an undergraduate programme, you would be in accommodations for your um, your academic year, which usually ends um, in June. For masters, you would be in for a full uh, and calendar year um, as your programmes are 12 months long. So in terms of keeping yourself entertained at the university, societies can be a really good part of that. And they're also a great way to get to know other students, uh, find people that you have um, share a genuine interest with as well. Um, and, you know, put yourself out there in different parts of the university. It can be quite easy to become siloed into your area of study and that societies are a great option to diversify away from that. Uh, we have over 200 different societies on a typical year. I've listed some of some of them um, on the screen here. There are plenty more than that. And you can create your own one as well. But largely you have political um, views, religious beliefs, uh, cultural national identities, uh, the arts, sort of performing, um, food, gaming, computing, um, music, comedy, you know, you name it. There's pretty extensive um, options for you here. Um, and we also offer sports. Now sports in the UK, are not professionalized like you would find in the US or in sort of in that middle ground in Canada. Um, so nice thing about that is no one sort of, uh, you know, going to go and be a pro athlete or very rarely from this. So you can get involved with sports that you've never played with before. They are still play competitively. So you'll play um, other universities and also potentially teams in the local area that aren't at university level at your chosen sport. Um, for most sports, we have... Um, male and female teams where applicable and co-ed where possible. Um, and most uh, sports will have at least two different squads, one that's more social focused, one that is slightly more competitive and for those who have an experience in the background as well. You'll see that um, there's a few sort of water sports on here. Um, we are on the beach um, in the UK, so we have the uh, ability to be able to offer that. But if group organised activities aren't really your thing, campus is still a really vibrant and lively place for you to get involved with. Um, we have lots of different food options, um, including a bi-weekly farmer's market and street food um, options, which is my favourite time of week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, always there. Um, we also have lots of things to keep fit with two, sport, uh, two gyms and outdoor sports facilities. We also make quite a big deal of celebrations at Sussex and um, it's something that feeds from the city that we're part of. Um, we have a big welcome fair, we celebrate different pride events and my favourite is our One World Week that we celebrate. So we celebrate our internationality of the university, um, societies will host events um, representing their nation or culture um, for everyone to um, ingratiate themselves into other people's um, backgrounds. So that's a really good thing um, that we have. It's you know one of my favorite things um and it's always in march we also have lots of sort of other activities going on campus open mic nights music um music live music quizzes um parties at relevant points in the year it might be during welcome week halloween christmas those kinds of things and we also want campus to be a safe space as well so we have a 24-hour security team that are based on campus um they are there 24-7, 365 days a year. So they're there to assist our students from anything feeling unsafe on campus or down to you've locked yourself out and you need someone to let yourself let you into their room, into your room as well. 
In terms of other facilities at the university, um, we have a 24 hour library, which um, is always something that's really popular with our students. It's set over three, uh, four floors with uh, just short of a million resources in there and um, for all areas of study. There's also quiet spaces within it, separate rooms you can book out as well. Um, we've also just opened our brand new student centre, which is a space entirely for our student population to um, use for um, studying, socialising, booking appointments to have with other departments at the university, um, or, or a bit of everything as well. Um, it's also got a sort of um, help desk, you know, if you can go there if you don't really know what you want to, what you you know you want help with a certain area, but you don't really know where to go with that, um, you can totally go see them and they'll be able to point you in the direction. In terms of student support, we offer a breadth of different options. Um, our Student Life Centre is there to support your life at university, so it might be um, helping you with uh, feeling a bit homesick or lonely or even things like budgeting. But they also work quite closely with our um, student support unit who's here, here to support your academic life at university. So if you have a disability, a learning difficulty or anything else that's going to impact your studies, we can put things in place to make um, life a bit easier for you. We also offer immigration support um, with our specially trained team uh, with relation to visas, working in the UK, all of that kind of thing. We have our careers and employability centre as well. So if it's looking for a part time job whilst you're studying with us or, um, you know, using it just before you graduate. And it's actually a service you can use three years after you graduate. They're there to provide uh, really good um, advice and guidance, both on the practical side and the more um sort of broad concepts of looking for jobs. Uh, we, as I've mentioned, we've got two gym facilities. We also have a supermarket and an international food grocer on campus, a post office, um, a full healthcare centre, including our dentists and opticians, and our students' union. So it really has the makings of a small town campus um, for you to enjoy. Now, this is our campus here, the biggest sort of sprawling space at the very front of the image, and the two white buildings at the very back of um, the image just up here. This is the city centre. So it looks quite um, a long way, but actually um, it's really close. We're only 10 minutes by, or nine minutes to be precise by train or 25 minutes by bus. Um, both are super accessible. The bus service runs 24 seven. Uh, the train service runs about from about uh, 4 a.m. till midnight. So both really good public transport options um, with lots of flexibility and availability. We've also got a great location in um, relation to the rest of uh, the country. So just an hour to London by train. Those trains run very, very frequently, about every 15 minutes. And uh, 30 minutes Gatwick International Airport, um, which you can fly directly in from Toronto for sure, probably other places in Canada as well. So you can make your journey the other side of the pond very, very easy. So we're in a city called um, Brighton. Now Brighton is a city of about 300,000 people, which for England is mid-size. Um, it is well known for being an artsy, liberal, um, and fairly bohemian part of the country. Um, it's a very young, vibrant city. Our biggest age group is 25 to 44, and then our student population. So um, young, professional, and um, fun place to live. It's really got something for everybody. Um, as you can see here, a um, mixture of seafront life, city life as well. Um, and I really describe it as a place you can be exactly who you want to be, no matter who or what that is, without any fear of judgment at all. And it really has got something for everybody in terms of entertainment. So the sort of three parts to the city, I would say, you have the beach life. Um, obviously, that's great in the summer, but actually a nice day in the winter and it'll still be very busy. Sea swimming even during the winter is very popular in Brighton. I think they're a bit mad for doing that, but, you know, each to their own. Um, obviously, got lots of water sports. There's lots of bars, restaurants, nightclubs on the seafront. Um, but you'll see... It'll, I think being by the water gives the city a bit more of a sort of relaxed, chilled vibe than other places in the country. We also have a great city life, which is kind of split in two. You've got your new part where you'll find brands that are recognisable to you from home. But the real essence of Brighton is in an area called the Lanes, the old part of the city, uh, back from when we were a fishing village in the 1700s. You know, the, the streets are maybe three metres wide. They're really small. Um, and it's the independent hub of uh Brighton, which is really important to us. We really want to support our local businesses, um, restaurants, um, cafes, all of that kind of thing. So that's where you'll find the real heart of that and lots of arts, 
sort of venues, whether it be cinemas, comedy clubs, music venues, that kind of thing. But we're also really lucky to be surrounded for the country by the countryside. So if you're not an outdoor, um, not a city person at all, you've got loads of green space. Um, we are actually the only English university to be set in a national park. So um, the image in the bottom right there was taken about 10 minutes walk from campus. So if that's more your um, style, you've got plenty of options there. So um, the nice thing I would think about the University of Sussex is you have a great campus life, um, have that lovely community of being in a contained campus, but you also are only um, a stone's throw away from the city centre too. So you're not missing out there. So I'll leave it on that for Sussex specifically. Now I just want to come to talking about law um, directly now. Um, so law is our most popular sus uh, subject at Sussex for Canadian students and we have a long history of supporting our students through um, the process of coming to law uh, coming to study law um, as you may be aware you can study law straight out of high school um, in the UK and we also offer graduate entry law as well so in terms of our LLB options these are the undergraduate degrees we have our, our most popular one for Canadian students looking to do three years is the law LLB but you can combine that with a host of other subjects as you can see here um, we also offer law graduate entry which is the two-year um, law option for those who have already taken an undergraduate degree um, it's an alternative to going to law school in Canada where obviously we know it's you know, extremely competitive um, and also three years. So what you will study in year one, the reason you can do law in um, the UK um, and then go and practice and be a lawyer in Canada is um, because we're both common law systems. So whilst, yes, you've got the English legal system in here, the principles of the law are applicable to um, law back in Canada. And we also try to inbuild Canadian law into our um, curriculum for our Canadian students. As you can see here, Canadian constitutional law is offered in the first year. Um, in the second year, you go into the more foundational um, stuff again in different areas. Um, but in the third year, you have loads of flexibility um, to pick from these are just some of the examples that we've offered over the last couple of years. I'll draw your attention to Canadian administrative law, um, specifically, again, put in place for our Canadian students. Um, also to Aboriginal law. Um, that is something that we see a lot of, not exclusively, but a lot of Canadian students taking. Um, the reason that what we think our LLB is so popular is that Canadian admin law and Canadian constitutional law make up the exact two of the exams that you need to take on return to Canada. So whilst they're not tuition classes for those, it gives you the, that really solid knowledge before you've even thought about revising for those. We also offer masters in law, um, if that is something you're looking at. Um, we offer LLMs and then also a law MA as well. And um, we also offer a PhD in legal studies if that is of interest. Um, so in terms of other things that the law school offers, we have a state-of-the-art mooting facility, which in my head is a courtroom, um, so you can actually put your skills from the classroom into practical um, into a practical format in that space. We offer the chance for work experience, um, legal work experience through our uh, clinics that we run at the university. We run about 10 pro bono, pro bono pro bono legal clinics for the local community in lots of different areas of law, family, employment, environmental, arts law, um, and sort of more citizens advice um, issues as well, to name a few. And um, those are run um, largely by our students, supervised either by our academics or from um, lawyers in outside practice that come to us as well. We also run internal competitions and take part in regional, national and international legal skills um, competitions and our Canadian students have great success in these. Um, most recently our two Canadian students uh, went to the world finals of the client interviewing um, skills. We also have a number of law societies. So we have our law society that runs for the whole law school. We have our Canadian Student Law Society, we have Women in Law Society and we also um, run an NCA prep society. So NCA exams are what you need to sit on return to Canada to apply your law degree successfully to the Canadian system and we have a prep society set up for those as well. So other things that are beneficial for our Canadian students, obviously you've got those dedicated Canadian law modules that are within your curriculum, that's 
great and they are offered every single year um, so you're not going to miss out on those you've got the Canadian Law Society um, and that really works in a way of being a law society in terms of sort of professional development but also um, a community away from home um, for students who might be missing it and um, they run social events as well as more professionally minded things too and um, the NCA Prep Society is also a really essential one um, for uh, support in that um, process. We've also been doing this for about 15 years now. So it's a well-trodden path of Canadian students joining us in the UK for law. We have a Canadian faculty um, within the law school as well, um, who are there obviously to run a lot of the content in our Canadian teaching, but also there as a sort of support base and maybe a uh, addressing some of perhaps cultural differences that you might be experiencing and um, supporting you in your life within the university as well. We also have a really strong alumni base now um, in Canada as a result of our law students coming uh, to, to the UK, um, over 500 um, in Ontario alone. So we've got some really great networks and um, often have our grads come in and speak and give advice to the graduating classes and um, particularly in the legal sphere as well so you're not alone in it at all and um, the requirements don't vary um, particularly um, from what we saw earlier but just as a reminder that would be what we're looking at and we've already talked about tuition so we can skip that so if you're looking to apply for law if you're applying for an LLB so the undergrad programs including the graduate entry you apply through UCAS you can we're still accepting applications the first deadline is uh, January 25th as that should be 2023 for September 23 start we do accept late applications of up till June 30th and then if you're applying for an LLM you can apply directly to um, the university on our website and um, which is free to do and you need to at the very latest but apply by august 1st 2023 but i wouldn't recommend leaving that late april will be a good marker for you so um that's it from me i hope i well, well potentially we've got some questions to come and that i'll have a look at um if you just to finish off if you need anything at all you can get in contact with me uh, feel free to drop me an email or if you scan that first qr code on the screen you'll be able to book a one-to-one -one appointment with me um, i offer them monday to friday so we can have a quick chat and um, there's three different sessions you can book into so see what works for you and um, we also have some additional um, useful information on our website and our canada country page which is the second qr code if you want to scan that um, general information about studying at Sussex um, coming from Canada, some student testimonials as well, which are quite nice to read too. But thank you for listening. Um, I will come out of this now and see what questions we have, um, if any. And um, obviously we've still got about 15 minutes of the session, so do feel free to put any other questions in the chat box as well. I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen. And we'll come here. Oh, goodness, there is a lot of questions, which is great. So I'm going to try and get through um, the um, majority of them. I'm just going to. Uh, so there's a, um, quite a few questions about scholarships. Um, so um, yes, we do have international scholarships available. Um, they are scholarship culture in the UK is significantly, um, I guess, lower or not as prevalent as it is elsewhere in the world. But there are options available. Um, it will depend on the program you're applying for and the level of study that you are coming to um, do with us. But um, we have. Um, our main one that I can think of, we, we offer at both undergrad and postgraduate level is our Chancellor's International Scholarship. If successful, um, you would be eligible for a £5,000 tuition fee discount for each year you're with us. So if you're coming for a three-year undergrad, um, it would be £5,000 discount through for every year that you're with us. So, But do check our website on this because there will be subject-specific ones. Um, they tend to be merit-based and um, the UK as a whole tends not to go down the sort of full ride um, area. So um, most Canadian students will be making the funding up of different um, different options. Um, it's also worth noting that a lot of um, federal funding in Canada can be used um, in the UK as well. So I'm definitely looking into that for you, what, 
what that means for you. Um, so I've got a few questions about um, law um, more specifically. Um, so our biggest law programme is um, either our graduate entry law, which you can apply for if you have already done an undergraduate degree, or the standard law three-year um, option. Um, they are the most general and also entirely law focused. Um, you can do a joint honours and um, where you do some 25% of your time doing another subject area. Um, but most Canadian students we see are coming to do just, just law. That's what they want to do. After doing law in the UK, there is no need to go to law school in Canada. Um, what you would need to do is um, write some exams called the NCAs. Um, which basically transfer your Canadian, uh, your British law degree into the Canadian one. Um, and then you would article and write the bar like you would had you been to um, a Canadian law school. I've got a couple of questions about sort of employment rates, um, that kind of thing. Um, I don't have any specific data on that as as right now. Um, I do work with alumni fairly regularly, particularly if oh, this has got some questions specific to law here. And, um, you know, everyone who wants to be a lawyer has gone home and been a lawyer. So um, that is absolutely fine. Um, deadline for 2023. So as I mentioned, it all depends on what you're going to study for undergrad. The first deadline is January 25th. Um, 2023 for September 23 entry. The second is June 30th. If you apply after January 25th, it is a first come first serve um, system. So we would always recommend applying by January 25th as we can. Um, so let's have a look here. I've got a question um, with about nursing, we don't offer nursing, I'm afraid, um, so we wouldn't be the university for you. And we don't offer a double degree in music and law. Um, the UK system doesn't work like that. You pick your one subject, maybe two, um, if it is a joint programme, but they're always related subject areas. So you might often see like history and, and politics or politics and international relations, business and marketing, and you don't get the diversity like that at all. I've um, got a couple of questions about campus sort of diversity and safety. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the um, presentation, um, we have a very diverse and international uh, campus. Uh, about 30% of us, well, it is over 30% of our students are coming from outside of the UK. And um, last year is from about 140 different nations. So it's a pretty diverse place to be. And campus is pretty safe as well. So because we're not in the city centre, like people don't tend to come to the university unless they have the intention of being there, which is great. So it tends to be just students and staff on campus the majority of the time. And we remember we do have that 24 hour security team there. Uh, we also have emergency phones around campus um, that you can stop at and, and someone will come and collect you if you are feeling unsafe. Um, and we also have um, sort of not a full residential advisor, scheme um that's not the way it works in the uk but um residential life support as well um got a couple of questions about like what sort of programs we offer um we are about fight we offer finance we offer psychology if that is um of interest to you um i've got another question about student services yeah so just to refer back to that we offer uh, student services, uh, housing, student life, student support, which is more about sort of supporting um, any disabilities, learning difficulties or anything else that will hinder your studies. Um, you also have a careers and employability centre, immigration. Uh, we have also in, within your academic departments, you'll have a student um, uh, academic advisor who is there to uh, sort of talk about your academics a little bit more as well so there's plenty of support um it won't you won't go unsupported um in that either um okay i think i've covered oh one question about is the gym 24 hours uh it's not 24 hours no um it's from about 7 a.m till 10 p.m so a pretty good offering um and then a question about class sizes that's entirely going to depend on your degree program um 
so law for example is massive um so lectures will particularly in your first and second year where you're taking those core classes that you have to do they will be 500 in lectures maybe anywhere between 15 and 20 in seminars um if you're in a smaller program um you can expect things to be much smaller so i my program at sussex when i studied there was quite small um, my lectures were maximum 50 class sizes maximum uh, probably 12 in practice so um yeah pretty pretty uh cozy those ones and um, what was my favorite part about campus oh good question and um, i really like the contrast of having um, or not contrast but all the green space so as i mentioned we're in the sort of grounds of a national park and that's definitely been adopted into the campus space um you know obviously we've got the buildings there that we need but you're not on top of everything and um, you have to walk outside to go from classroom to classroom um so that i really enjoy that and it's also the location you know being convenient to the city center but also having that sort of luxury of uh lots of fresh air and green space around is lovely uh, i have a question about pharmacy um we don't offer pharmacy i'm afraid so you'd need to speak to another university about that um okay cool i think i've covered most areas that were in the chat there and um, we have a couple more minutes left so if you would like to answer, ask any other questions uh, please do pop them in the chat i'll hold on until um 5 15 eastern um if you do want to ask anything else but obviously if you're done thank you so much for coming along um you are it's been great having you here um so i have a question about studying law online that's not an option i'm afraid and in fact the um nca the people that accredit your british degree and those exams you take don't permit for um online study with law so you wouldn't then be able to come back and practice in canada which potentially defeats the point so um that won't be an option at all at any university they may offer it but in terms of your accreditation coming back it wouldn't be the most sensible option to go for I think just also there's a quest, couple of questions about suitability for graduate entry law. Um, so for graduate entry law, you don't have to have a background in law or anything like that to be a, or legal studies to be able to be eligible. Um, we will accept from any background um, into grad entry law. Um, now, it may be that certain skills will be not preferred, but would be helpful for you. So definitely the sort of arts, humanities and social sciences is where we tend to see people coming from. But actually, we've seen an increase coming of people coming back from uh, the sort of sciences background, particularly with regards to sort of like environmental science, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, any there was a question specifically there I saw about psychology, that would be absolutely fine to come and study graduate entry law. You can also do the three year law degree if you even with an undergraduate degree you know you want that greater depth of legal education so i have a question how come you don't need an undergraduate degree for start studying law yeah it's just the way the british system set up um and you in canada actually the law degree you get is technically an undergrad degree it's not a master's level degree um yeah so it's just the way we're set up um, so I, there's no rhyme or reason for it. It's just the way it is here. And um, it's, you know, you, there's no reason that you can't then go and be a lawyer in Canada afterwards. We have students do that every year. So if you want to come straight out of high school, you can. And um, it would be for the three year degree, not the two year one. Um, the two year one is only for those that have already studied um, at an undergraduate level. Okay, we have about five minutes left if anyone else has any questions that they'd like to ask. Um, for, if anyone's just joined us, um, 
we're in the Sussex uh, session for the University of Sussex in the UK. Um, I'm afraid you have missed the presentation, um, but feel free to ask any uh, questions in the chat. Oh, I have a question here saying, accept, do we accept students from Newfoundland, Newfoundland and Labrador? Yes, absolutely fine. Just as a reminder as well, I will be um, online until 9pm Eastern tonight, so um, do come along over to our virtual booth and say hi if you have any questions that you'd like to ask specifically about your situation or a bit more in-depth information about any of the programmes that we offer here at Sussex as well. So I think we're going to leave it there for this afternoon. Um, I'll be, as I said, available online all day. Um, so do come over and say hi if you want to ask anything specific about Sussex. If not, I hope you enjoy the rest of the event. I hope you found this useful and uh, thanks for watching.